what's up subscribers uh, welcome to the full length video of the how to get to space with the fewest parts uh, in this video I'm just kind of gonna be rambling about things uh, if you clicked on it you already want to hear more because the first video I think I'm just gonna try to make two minutes uh, so I'll just kind of let you know what's going on in uh, in my life right now in this video as well as some space stuff so recently I've been uh, I've been fairly busy with a lot of things, mostly uh, aerospace stuff. So I am, I'm a senior in aerospace engineering at my university. And what that means for us is that we have a senior design project, which we have to complete our senior year. And for me, I chose the, the space option, obviously. And uh, yeah, it's been really busy. So I'm, I was selected as team leader for my space group. And because of that, I have a lot of responsibilities involved with it, uh, and it's been taking up a lot of my time. So I haven't been able to get as many Kerbal Space Program videos done as I'd like, uh, or Star Citizen for that matter, or just videos in general, because I've had to focus on that. I'm also studying uh, for the GRE test to get into graduate school, and I've been doing some undergraduate research on uh, plasma actuators for electric thruster stiff has been crazy. But anyway, yeah, I just woke up uh, oops, maybe like an hour or two ago, and I'm about to go on a run, but I decided I'd make this video first. So, yeah. We're just going to do our little burn here. We got to get down to 1,240 fuel, and, and Jebediah can blast off into space. But yeah, so for our project, it's a... We're, we're essentially making a sounding rocket. If you don't know what that is, it's pretty much a rocket that would go up first, take some atmospheric readings, and kind of probe the area. And for us, what that means is that uh, we're going to have about a six and a half foot high rocket, and it's going to go to an apogee of one mile, deploying a payload of five pounds. And uh, on its way, it's going to take a lot of atmospheric readings. All right, so we're approaching our launch point here. Got our sat on, and launch. there we go, just as expected, we're just barely taking off, that's totally okay, that's exactly, that just means that we're 100% efficient on this rocket, so, that's awesome, but yeah, as group lead, I kind of just have to look over uh, everything that's going on, plan meetings, I have a meeting later today with my team, and we have a, uh, a little update going on. So there's like six people on my team right now. Uh, and I kind of just had to look over everyone and answer questions when they have it. But, I mean, everyone is super smart by now. We started with like 140 people in my class, in my aerospace uh, class, freshman year. I think we're down to like 40 now. So as you can imagine, everyone who's left pretty much knows their shit. So I don't have to do much leading or like much stepping on people's toes. It's kind of just organizing stuff and answering questions when needed. But yeah. So I don't know. I'm, I, I think most of my friends in aerospace engineering actually play Kerbal Space Program, uh, which is which is funny because I think it's a it's a game that kind of crosses a lot of gaps between people who know stuff about aerospace engineering and people who don't know about aerospace engineering. And uh, it's fun for everyone, which is awesome. As far as other things going on in my life right now, I'm uh, trying, um, I'll be applying to SpaceX soon for the, the summer internship position. If I can get an internship with SpaceX over the summer and uh, then maybe go to grad school later or get them to pay for grad school or I'll pay, for, I don't know, that'd be, that'd be, that'd be nice. I've been applying for them for like the last three years every time I could I, I pretty much did so never got uh, never got accepted but you know you gotta just keep on trying I'm uh, I'm fairly I'm confident I'm good enough for them so I just gotta show them that you know so that's why I've been doing a little bit of undergraduate research uh, with the plasma thrusters and uh, that's going well we just got some parts in today we were waiting for glass walls to our our uh, vacuum chamber. Yeah, we have a vacuum chamber. It pulls like 95 kilopascals. It's crazy. 
crazy. Anyway, but it, we, we, had a, we had a leak in our vacuum chamber, so we had to seal it up again and order some new windows, new plexiglass windows for it. Basically, the reason you use windows instead of just walls is that if you're going to scratch something, you might as well scratch something that's replaceable. So you have like a big plexiglass body that's all bolted together, but you also want to have a, a window system. So if you get scratches on it, we're just starting a gravity turn. If, uh, if you get scratches on it, then it's not an issue because you can just replace the window. So in our case, what happened is that the window seal actually started going bad, and we had a crack in one of the windows, so we just started replacing it. But it's really cool. Uh, very interesting idea. Basically, with the plasma actuator, you can... Any gas, if you're on any planet anywhere, in any atmospheric condition, if you can excite gas to the point where it turns into plasma, it generates a lot of pla uh, pressure, and you can, you can do this with just electricity, so you don't need to carry any like fossil fuels or onboard propellant when you're doing this stuff, which is awesome. Because that, like for purposes of like Mars or something, right? You can have a, uh, a on a rover, you could have a plasma actuator cluster to like push you over rocks. And they, they can have that much force. All right, let's see. We want to get, I want to get my apogee up a little bit. I'm kind of getting worried at this point. We have a lot of tangential, but we, we haven't gotten above our, where I want to be. So we're just going to, we're just going to burn, burn at 45 for a little bit. And we really only need, um, like a hundred to really circulate. So we're, we're still doing all right, but I'm also looking at new mics for my YouTube. You know, I, I really, I don't have that many subscribers, but I do like the quality of my videos to be nice. And I feel like if I had a better mic set up, then uh, some of you might appreciate that. And I know I would, just like, because I listen to all of my videos before I post them, and I'm always like, oh, my audio on that is, could be a lot better. But uh, yeah, here we go. So we're just setting up our circulation burn. I, I could also just talk better, honestly. I, I mumble a lot. I don't know if you saw my tribes warm up video, but I do, I actually do jaw exercises before. I play tribes that I don't mumble, which is kind of funny, um, but it works. So, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Anyway, so the cool thing about this design is that, you know, I'm going to get into orbit with just three parts, but in addition to that, you could have a docking port on the top and a solar panel for long-term capabilities. Now you would have to align to a pole and just kind of wait there um, for your other ship to come in. Cause I, I don't, you might be able to put some RCS thrusters on this, but Ooh, the music. Um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't count on it. You know, why ruin this such a simple design with something like RCS thrusters when you can really, you really only need RCS thrusters on whatever you're docking to. So it's not really ideal. You couldn't, it'd be hard. I'm not going to say you couldn't. It'd be hard to dock to a space station with this. You could definitely finagle something. Because normally when I finish this, I have like anywhere between 10 and 30 fuel units left. So you could put like some maneuvering thrusters, but then once again, that adds weight. So don't really want to do that. Anyway, so we're kind of coming up on the, on the ending of this video pretty soon. I'm just going to circulate and be done with it. So I guess I'll do like my little spiel. Um, if you have any suggestions for future videos, let me know in the comments. If you have any um, questions about this video, also in the comments. Uh, I am planning on doing an interplanetary tutorial soon for uh, one of the guys in my other videos. And uh, I was a I tried asking him if he wanted it with any certain ship design, but he didn't get back to me. So I've already designed a ship. Um, but if you guys can get to me within, I don't know, maybe like even by the end of the day, then um, maybe this is gonna be close. No, we got it. Yeah, so if we can get to it um, by the end of the day, then I can, I can incorporate that change in the video. I'll probably be making it this afternoon. Uh, but I just wanted to get out a KSB video because honestly, I've been doing these let's plays and stuff like that. But um, I love KSB. I love Star Citizen. Those are the two things I haven't really been doing a lot of lately. Uh, it's mainly been time stuff. So. But yeah, this has been Swiss Milk with a uh, with a full length commentary on how to get to uh, to orbit with just three parts and kind of a little rant about what's going on in my life. So if you have any questions about anything. Anything at all. I mean, I only have like what 200 subscribers. I can pretty much have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you at this point It might not be true in the future if like I become like super god of YouTube or whatnot But right now, you know any questions whatsoever. Just let me know 
I like talking to you guys. I appreciate you watching my videos. I appreciate you subscribing. So yeah, this is Swiss Milk with another video. See you guys later.